Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of these videos. This is a Cubase series for beginners on how to use Cubase. So in the last episode, I showed you how to create an audio track and just record a basic audio file. So in this episode, we're going to move on to VSTs. Okay, so VST basically stands for Virtual Studio Technology. And these are basically just virtual instruments. So if you want a drum kit or if you want a piano or if you want, I don't know, any instrument you can think of, you just load up a VST of that instrument and then you're good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this channel and just delete it for now. So right click, remove selected tracks and I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to right click on this window again, this side panel. And this time I'm going to put add instrument track. The same as in episode one. And we're going to use Halion Sonic on this one. And we're going to put stereo out. Add track. So this time you're going to want to load in some instruments. So I'm going to start with a piano. So you can scroll through here and you can click on piano. And you can then find a piano sound that you like. I'm going to go with this Yamaha S90 ES piano. Double click it and that will then load it up. If you have a keyboard connected to your computer, then you can then play the keyboard and it'll then play that, that piano sound. I also have a pedal connected to mine. I'm going to try loading in a few other sounds just so you can hear what they sound like. Jazz Grand Piano. Mellow Grand Piano. Oh, You can also play the piano by clicking these notes down at the bottom. Old Vinyl Piano. Let's see what that sounds like. There's loads of different sounds in here. I'm sure this comes with all versions of Cubase, but you'll have to check on the website to make sure that you have all of these sounds. I know quite a few of the sounds only come with the Pro version, but you still get quite a good amount of them in the other versions. Right, so I'm going to go back to this Yamaha one. This is one I always come back to for some reason. Right, and then I'm going to close this by clicking on that. You can adjust the the sound of the piano with these little dials at the bottom. So the decay on the note. You can adjust the pan, so left and right pan. Um, also reverb, reverb time, reverb mix. But it really loads of reverb. Yeah, let's reset that. Right, and then I'm going to close that. I can rename this channel by double clicking on this here, and I'm just going to put piano. Oh, no, I put P U N O instead. Let's change that. Piano. Right. Then I'm going to load in a different type of VST, and this is one that I've bought. Right, so basically. You get a load that comes with Cubase, a load of VSTs that come with Cubase, but you can also go out and buy other VSTs that uh, away from Cubase or Steinberg. So other companies release their own versions. One of the most popular things to do is use a program called Contact. And basically what that does is it's a player, so you can then load in VSTs to that player. So it's sort of like a go-between. So using it this way is just loading up the VST directly. And that one comes with Cubase, so that's like a really basic way to do it. But I'm going to show you how to load in contacts in case you ever want to go out and buy your own instruments and stuff for this. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go add instrument track. And then on the instrument section here, 
I'm going to change this to contact and I'm using contact six. This is by native instruments. There's different versions of this. There's like a, a free, I think there's a free player version, which has limited features, but the one I'm using is the full version. And I'm going to click add track and that loads up this. So these are the instruments that I own in contact. And I'm just going to load in this Amadeus Symphonic Orchestra. This is one that you won't have probably unless you've gone out and bought it. But I'm just using this as an example to load in different types of instruments. I'm going to click and then I'm going to find a sound that I want. Let's try, I don't know, a guitar. So acoustic guitar, nylon string guitar. I'm going to double click. And then it gives us some options then for this VST. So as you can see, this is slightly different because we're loading the instrument into this player. I suppose it's kind of similar to the Halion Sonic player. If you ever want to see the other screen again that we had up like this one, then you can click on that on the instrument and then click on this little icon here, this edit instrument, and that will load up that window again. I suppose it's kind of similar to this. This is the Halion Sonic player. And this is the contact player. I feel like you have a little bit more functionality with the contact player though. It's a little bit easier to use. Right, so I'm just going to stick with the basic sounds on that. Make sure my channel is selected. You'll notice that if I'm if I have this one selected and I play the keyboard, it's going to play this string guitar sound that we have loaded up if i then click on this one it's going to play the piano sound right okay so we have two instruments loaded in we've got two different players loaded in we've got the halion sonic player playing the piano we have the contact player playing the contact instrument the, the guitar and you're probably thinking that's quite simple to do. We just need to do that multiple times, but you don't have to load in more than one player. So as you can see, this is the player here, this window. We, we can just load in multiple instruments to this player. So I'm now going to load in. Let's look for. Let's look for strings. I'm just going to load in a string ensemble. So violin small section one that'll do double click that and that's now on midi channel two so i'm going to close that by clicking this and basically i want to put these onto different outputs so i'm going to click here on this arrow and i'm just going to change this to st.2 and then i'm going to go to the the right panel here so see this side panel at the top this little tiny icon thing i'm going to click on this right one so show hide right zone that might be open for you automatically because it's i think the default setting is to have this open which is perfectly fine i i prefer to close it right and then i'm going to click on the vsti tab and where it says contact i'm just going to click this arrow here and go to activate outputs so by default output one is already selected so that one's already on and then we're going to go to output two so now we have two outputs okay so now that we've loaded that instrument up we need to get a violin channel onto this project window so i'm going to right click again here and this time i'm going to go to add midi track I'm just going to name this violin add track. So what's the difference here? An instrument track basically loads up the player as well. So every time I click add instrument track, it's loading in the player. Whereas if I click add MIDI track, I can then sync that MIDI track to an existing player. So I just need to reroute this now to this player and also output to and MIDI channel to. So this number here tells us the MIDI channel. So if I just click on this, it's going to load up and I can just make sure that 
channel 2 is selected and that's basically that number there the output we don't need to touch at all on that because it's already set up in the player so now when I play the keyboard we should have a violin sound I'm also going to rename this one to guitar okay so what should you do if you don't have a keyboard connected to your computer how do you get them sounds I, I don't want to keep loading in the player all the time and just clicking on these you need to have a way to input notes to this so what we're going to do is I'm going to first of all close this right panel I don't like having that open and we're going to click on the draw tool at the top here and I'm basically just going to draw across here so I'm holding down the, the button the left mouse button and just dragging across to say eight bars and then I'm going to go to the first tool again the selection tool I'm going to double click on this now when when you double click on it it might open in the bottom window so Cubase has a bottom window like this and it's probably going to open like this for you this is called the piano roll so I'm basically just going to draw in notes on this piano so this has a separate toolbar just for this piano roll on the bottom screen I'm going to click on the draw tool and if you play these notes you can hear the piano Okay, I can if I hold control again and then scroll the mouse wheel I can zoom in and out I just want to make sure I can see all the bars right so I'm gonna basically just draw in a C major chord and then an F major chord just keep it really simple and then an A minor chord so A C E and then a G major chord G B and D if you don't know music theory very well there is actually a way to use a chord track that will help you find these chords so all you have to do is tell it which chord to play and it'll just do it and I actually have no idea how to use them chord tracks because I've never used it at all I've, I've studied music theory for about 15 20 years so um, I've never actually needed to use the chord tracks but I know a lot of people that do use them and they work really well so if your music theory isn't up to scratch then definitely check out a video on them chord tracks I couldn't help you there because I've never used them so yeah I'm just going to stick with inputting notes the old fashioned way so if you press spacebar on your keyboard by the way that's basically play and stop so I'm just going to press spacebar That is a really simple chord progression. I'm going to close this bottom window and there you can see it on the project window. I'm going to drag this down to the, the fifth bar because it's only a four bar phrase. I think we're just going to stick with writing the four bar phrase for now. Right, so I've basically just zoomed ahead in time and I've created this little four instrument four bar phrase so it's piano guitar violin and this is going to be drums so i'm just going to briefly talk you through what i've done here i'm using i'm going to right click here add instrument track i'm using groove agent for the drums and that basically looks like this so what you do is you just click on here and you load in a drum kit there's loads of different sounds different genres find one that you like and you can either just use it to play the the burst sounds of the instrument so snare drum kick drum hi-hats toms etc or you can use patterns and for this i've just used a pattern i've just found a simple sort of drum bass drum hits and what i've done is i've just dragged that into the project and that syncs it to your tempo and everything so that's all I've done for the drums. 
Um, the violin. In fact, so let me just press play and there you can hear what I've done. We've got that simple piano chord idea, so C, F, A minor, G. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I've done on this guitar track as well. I'm going to open it up in the lower zone. And this, where is it? There it is. So I just have to scroll down a little bit. So I'm just basically following the same chords as the piano, but just doing a little bit more rhythm and a bit more movement on it. So if I click on this S here, on the guitar track, it's just going to solo that guitar. That S stands for solo. The M stands for mute. So if I want to get rid of the guitar, I'm just going to click mute and that will not play the guitar as we press play. So I'm going to solo it with this one. So solo. And I'm just going to press play. Oh, put in a random note there. Just a really simple, basic guitar pattern. The violin is just basically playing really simple notes. So we're starting on a C, then we're going to an A. Um, the notes in F major are F, A and C. So I'm just playing the third of F major there. And then A minor is A, C and E. So I'm playing the third of A minor there. And I'm playing the third of G major there, so that's a B. And I'll play that. I'm going to unmute the guitar and I'm going to mute the violin. Uh, solo the violin, sorry. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to show you the drums as well. Click on the drum one. And drums are going to be a little bit different because each instrument of the drum has its own note on the piano roll. So C1, this is actually the same for every single instrument. So C1 is always kick drum. And C sharp 1 is usually a, a sort of, it's usually like the, the sticks hitting together or like a side snare thing. D and E are snare drums. I think D is bottom of the snare and E is the top of the snare. And yeah, I'm not going to go through them all, but basically every instrument of the drum has its own key. So as you can see, we're playing a kick drum on every beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we've got a few little tom things going on. And the velocity down here, if you don't have this velocity thing open, you can click on this button here and then click on velocity. And that will create this lane at the bottom. Um, velocities are important because that tells you how hard to hit the instrument. So as you can see, some notes are louder than others. And that gives it a sort of more human feel to the, the drums. That goes with every other instrument as well. So if you look at the guitar... I can have, say, the first note. In fact, let me solo the guitar and I'll just mess about with some notes in this. So let's put this one quiet and then that one loud. You see that really quiet? You can mess about. In fact, I'm just going to demonstrate. Let's, let's mess about with this and now you can see there's, the volumes of each note are going to be all over the place. So it's basically up to you how you want to interpret the music. If you want things to have a louder hit or a softer hit, then that's how you, you input that. You just draw in the velocities along this bottom lane. There's so many different things as well on this controller lane. You can say you have the piano track. In fact, let me show you that. I'll go to the piano one now. Say you want the sustain. We already have it open here. If I... If you don't have it open, just click on that plus again and then select sustain. And that will create a sustain pedal track. So the, it, right at the bottom like that is off. So there's no sustain. And then if you click at the top, that means use pedal. 
So let's try messing with that. So that is now with pedal on. Sounds horrific, but if you need to use pedal, then that's what you would do. You can also use a combination, so um, so you can have like pedals on at certain points. So that would be on and then off, on and then off. So that's how you would do pedals on piano. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff there. There's volume control, there's breath control, panning control, volume expressions and stuff. It's also an articulation slash dynamics thing, so say I wanted the score to say MF. There's actually a, a built-in score editor with Cubase, but I'm not going to talk about that in this series. That's a bit too advanced for this. But yeah, you can basically adjust dynamics and stuff. So say I want it to show P there. There you go, that's really soft. And that's moderately loud. So that's how you would do that. There's all sorts of different ways to get different dynamics and variations of tones and things. Right, so that's basically it for this video. If that's helped in any way, then click that like button and subscribe. I'm going to play you out, actually. There we go. Yes. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Might have to actually make this into a song. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.